Welcome back. We are here with the Roadrunner and Buff from Buff's Garage, who's going to help me install the 440 and a torque flight that's been underwater into this Roadrunner. And hopefully, by the time we're done, it makes beautiful noises. My expectations are pretty low. Anyway, let's get started. One thing we got to do is change the motor mounts on this because I bought the wrong ones because Mopar uses different ones depending on the color of the vehicle uh, or depending on the day it was made or depending on the plant it was made or, or there's 478 different motor mounts they used all right and yeah so we got to change these out I bought these off of the Rock Auto and they're a clamshell kind of deal kind of like a Chevy so bolt those on then we're gonna hook stuff up you guys might notice my winterization. That will keep it warm in here. I feel warm already. Oh, me too. Warm with hatred of this, I mean, with love of the Mopar engine. Is this that Mopar no car thing? You got yours off. Yeah. I can take things apart. I put this together and I don't know. I see, I'm just stupid. That's the problem here. Then we take all these bolts out, remove these, and then we can pull out that nut, and then we can put the new things in. Assuming that these brackets are correct, and if they're not, then we'll figure something out. Well, I'm gonna guess that the dimple thing goes down. Like, in the hole. Like, near the hole. I'm gonna guess it's supposed to fit in the hole, but somewhere along the lines. It's, it's in the proximity. It's got the mark of quality on it right here. Made in India. Oh, I don't... Good to go. It's got the mark of excellence on it. Uh, this one's gonna fit. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> the other one's fit fine. Yeah, that's right on. Well, I mean, like, that just doesn't look very stable to me, but I don't know. But this is the right one, so... I, yeah, I mean, that's it, I guess. There's not even got a hood to worry about, so at least if it, if it sticks up like four feet in the air, that's just the way it is. Yeah, that doesn't really do a lot of centering. Mm -hmm. Oh, dude, that's perfect. Yep. Yep. Just right. put a level on it, it's good. Well, there's the trans we're using, and it's out of that 67 Fury that uh, I drug literally out of the earth. Yeah, well, you know, it's... It came with some topsoil, which is nice. Uh, it does spin, I know that, and there is fluid in it somewhere, and the torque converter still got fluid in it. So, uh, oh yeah. Well, I don't know if there's. It, it puked all over my shed. Oh, see, that's that's definitely dirt. That's that's mint. Just put that back. It'll be fine. Jesus. Uh, yeah. So when this doesn't work i'm taking the car to a transmission shop and they can take the guts out of that one and put them in this or whatever they want to do i want the motor in the car and we got to make progress so um we're going to install the torque converter unbolt this son of a gun and lift her up and do all that stuff zip them out yeah it's the worst thing Didn't fall off. I am willing to trust that car to play with my life. Not really. You crawl under it? <laughs> <laughs> Not a chance. You, this can go in the trash. I hate this thing. Ah, perfect. Question is, do we use motorhome torque converter? Or the extremely questionable torque converter? I think the rusty one wins. You think so? As long as it's going to engage your pump. Does the bolt pattern match? No. No? Okay, well, that just ma that makes it really <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we didn't do that. How come we can't touch this? <laughs> oh, dang, that's like almost like it came out of there. I hope that goes on there. Yeah, that's... You got it? No. No? Yeah, I uh, always have this problem. Every time. So used to it going just clunk clunk. Guess I'm spoiled. <laughs> you definitely <laughs> spoiled. <laughs> so am I. I think it's because the trans is just perfect. <laughs> <laughs> what about this seems like... Perfectly machined. This one obviously came out of there. I might have to Google and see 
if there's a difference in the input shaft spline. If that's the case, uh, we can take this thing off of the 383. Okay. What's the, why? Why? Why does everything have to be different? One. Mm -hmm. ah. Nope. And big negative, goat rider. I'll take it back out. No way. Is that is that it? Are you like, sure? It just it just went in. A... I mean, does it feel like it turns the pump? No. Nope. I think there's one more. Yep. But it went a second one that I did, wasn't expecting. All right. I'm changing my pants. Yeah. <laughs> I brought my dirty pants. Oh, I got it. I fucking got it. Huh? Yeah, I just had to get it started. Oh my God, it sounds awful. There ain't one chance in hell this works. You hear the sounds, the quality coming out of this thing? Sounds really good. It's not like we got any choice. Let's send it. What is all this stuff? It didn't spin when I first put it in, and I just kind of, you know, and then, then it just... Well, when it hit that first one, I was like, no way! And then I was like, no. <laughs> but it was further than it was. There. We just had to wiggle it. That sounds fine. Oh, yeah, no. I've done nothing but maintain that hoist. Am I getting close? Um, you got an inch or two. Oh, that, it's on the ground. It's there. Put that on the front one. They don't tilt back, right? I'm sure I can hold this. Oh god, that's gonna crush. You better go back up. Yeah. Uh, Alright. Can I grab this and it like oh. oh look at that. Oh just leave it right there. I can put a block of wood under it. Yeah, let's do that. Uh oh. Well, on the front side. Is We're it? not even close. I'm in danger. <laughs> <laughs> that under here, right? And then that'll give us the angle of the dangle. It's close. Yeah, that's what I keep seeing. I feel like the whole thing's twisted. It probably is. Probably has nothing to do with this carb plate that's twisted. Oh, you got it. Got, ah, ha, ha. got mine started. I'm so close. Your dirt filled piece of crap. Buff is learning the way of the Mopar. Things going backwards and forwards and sideways. And it's fine. Everything's fine. Doesn't make much sense to put that transmission in this car. I can tell you that. I think it matches the patina. Is oh, it does. Spot on. It's flawless. Yeah. Shove it all the way back. Okay. Oh, dude, that's gross. Yeah. Good. Oh, hey. I guess we're done. Well, that's as far as it goes. Brakes are top Did you notch. Want those done at O'Reilly's or? Yeah. Okay. Well. No. I may or may not have watched that episode. So this is actually a throttle valve. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it is necessary. Yeah. See? Yeah. Oh, that definitely is. That's definitely right. And this is definitely a shifter. And this is clearly optional. <laughs> <laughs> Hit the throttle, it'll shift the gear. Right. That's this. Like, you can see it's just all twisted. No, it looks fine. Now, if you can't tell, we were trying to figure out how the... Wizardry it's like works this here. Goes to this, yeah. but then that goes over here and uh -huh. somewhere that aligns with another. Right. I think we're ready to attempt stabbing, and uh, we'll see what happens with that. Not overly optimistic. We are messing with the throttle valve linkage thing, and it's broken. Yeah, it just flops. So Fine. that's good. That's good. She's gonna shift wide open if it moves and it won't so that's game plan here so let's get this jacking her up stabbing her in I mean, if i can sweep it along the fence <laughs> we're really close dude don't scratch it <laughs> height height and firewall all right i can go down a little bit yep i'm just trying to get some weight on it perfect oh That's just the oil plug. That's what you like to see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now we got to come down. Oh, man. Just shove it in. Uh, I have no shame. That's... What is puking? Antifreeze. Oh. How? I don't know. Come on. Come on. Oh. Oh. Yeah, it's bended. It'll be fine. Oh. 
Like a glove. Oh, yeah. Oh, that oops. was it. Oh, <laughs> uh, we gotta put a jack under the trains. There's no cross pepper. Aha! Yeah. Does that help? Hold on. Does that help? Oh, there it is. Right there. One more. Perfect. Drop it. Drop it. Boom! Installed. Money. Well, that was easy. Piece of cake. Just like I was saying. So, I'm ready to go to the bar. Let's go. <laughs> Alright, so what we gotta do here is make a carb gas. Oh yeah, the engine's in the car, by the way. We need to make a carb gasket. We don't have one. It's late. So just gonna trace around this adapter here. Try to trace on the inside. We'll cut on the outside of that line. And boom. Look, a spreadboard carb gasket. I just ruined it. Do it again! Do it again. I slipped. My workbench isn't really level. Here, if you didn't notice that. Nice and gently. Alright, around the edges. Roughly. That top outside edge really doesn't matter all that much. Just that inside part. You don't want to restrict all 107 horsepower this engine makes. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Huh? 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 No. Oh, that's marvelous. I love it. Yeah, that's real good. I was kind of an artist. Bolt that down. The key here, lesson for you both. Mm -hmm. Just forget about it tomorrow. And then when you have a vacuum leak later on, you just go, what? <laughs> Where? <laughs> How do I have a leak? Now we only need a starter, all of the wiring, all of the accessories, fuel, a, a trans cross member, fuel, I know this still has the burned gas tank in it, which I'm sure is fine. So all the gas should be gone, and there won't be any varnish in it. All right. So, whoa. So our whole goal here is just to get the damn thing to start, right? We got a hundred things that need done, but if we just get it to start, what we're going to end up doing is bolt the starter on. We got the manifold setting on it. Those are off of that Fury, and they fit uh, flawless, actually. Carb is on, bolted down with our homemade gasket. Uh, we have no throttle linkage. Oh, and we have no trans cross member. That's a problem. I might actually look and see if I can just buy one if I'm not worried about it right this second. We had took the heat shield off the starter because we don't need that where we're going. This starter is gigantic. <laughs> what the hell? Ah, there we go. He's trying to get a fuel line on. And I'm fighting the starter. And we're going to wire the starter up. And we should have crankage. All right, so we are almost wired for sound. And we gotta secure this ground cable here. We gotta, uh, I gotta put an end on the starter cable and put that on the, on the start side of the solenoid here. Ignition is wired, uh, theoretically. Buff did it, we'll blame him. That's what he's here for. Everybody needs a scapegoat. We have the starter engaging. But it may just need a little tickling. And yes, I destroyed the solenoid. Because that's just what I do. Oh, that's at least three on the channel. Tap it. <clears throat> nope. We fought that starter for about an hour. It was in a bucket of water whenever we put it on the car. I think that might have had something to do with it. Go fix it. Just weld it. <laughs> what? <laughs> you just have to get angry at it. Now it's happened to that, what, like 10,000 times? Dude, God. Now we gotta hook it up. <laughs> you sheared off one of the bolts. Uh-uh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I knew I should have tightened it all the way. Three it is. Yep. Bump it. <laughs> now, there's a bottle of gasoline right next to me. If I incinerate myself, it would be great for views. It did something! I'm seeing sparks. This spark in every. Dude, that starter is... Oh, <laughs> what is going on down there? Give her a little more gas. That's a lot. It's like the wire's touching off that starter. 
I... It's not touching anything. Good job, buddy. later i got a cross member trans cross member on ebay for 80 bucks with bolts sandblasted and ready to rock so we're gonna throw some paint on this and then we're gonna go ahead and install the trans cross member so the engine can be installed all the way i've got a yoke coming u-joints coming drive shaft coming i got a starter for it i got a belt for it i got a new starter solenoid i mean i tried to buy every damn thing i could think of so um that's where we're at, and let's uh, get this thing shined up and move on. JD's jacking up the transmission by the trans pan, so we can move the other jack off of the transmission mount and unbolt the old cross member I cut out of that Fury that I probably shouldn't have because it probably would have worked in this. But. Gotta rebuild everything. Look at that. It's brand new. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the idea is I might sell this car when I'm done with it. I don't want anybody to get ripped off by half-ass work, you know? So, we need this to be its, you know, perfect and perfectionist. And one might even say that Clark Dorkman might approve of it. Powder-coated. Mm -hmm. Now we just got to bake it on there. We are losing the shop! Ah! I broke the exhaust manifold because I'm stupid, so I have a new one of these coming as well. You know, live and learn, $80 mistake. I just broke the transmission mount, which is a bummer. But the bolts was stuck, and you know, I really probably shouldn't have been trying to use this anyways. So, uh, goodbye. Now I briefly considered still using that and then doing a trick that I learned from a Mr. David Freiberger in Carcraft Magazine many moons ago where you, you know, just throw a hose clamp around your tail shaft around the cross member and crank it down and it worked in the Cheap Thrills Dart back in the day. But I, I looked one up and it was $5.72 and it'll be here tomorrow, so... You know, I think after all the money I've spent in the last week, I think $5.72 is pretty dang acceptable. Next on the agenda is we need some kind of a shifter. And, uh, well, this one here might work. Uh, it's just the release here that's stuck. We don't need that where we're going, so. Now, I do have another shifter, but it don't move either. And so I don't really know if I'm gaining anything. And they are Chrysler shifters, so they have... 317 pieces to them. There's an arm that goes this way, 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 and an arm that goes that way. Because why exactly? I'm not sure. Hmm. It's pretty froze. And I have soaked this before. I don't think I don't think it's uh it's gonna un un unscrew, uns unstick. Before I break out the cutoff wheel, I'll just try gently persuading it. Well, this is going about as well as I would have expected. The good thing about not having any expectations is you're never disappointed. Audios. Aha! Ah, that's dangerous as hell. So basically what I did here is chopped off the detent right here that well you know was keeping it apart because we ain't got no push button -y things so now we can just slam it down although it looks like here i'll have to cut this back one off too 
right here so I can get first. There we go. Now we can get low. Oh, somewhere in here will be second. Oh crap, reverse power code. Oh, neutral. This all hooked up. And all we need is an arm. That we just need an arm to go from here to there. You know, to the shifter thing on transmission from shifter thing on shifter. I'm just going to go ahead and bolt the water pump pulley on its solid because I plan on running an electric fan. And that's just the way I prefer to do things when I'm, you know, just cobbling something together. As you then you don't got to worry about a fan shroud or making sure you got a fan that rotates the correct direction or any of that nonsense. You just, you know, throw it on and put a wire or two to it and you're done. So rather than try to use the overly complicated, heavy, and terrible Mopar alternator, I will go ahead and you know, throw this away and put a GM alternator on it because that requires like 15 wires or something and this needs one. Looks right about like right here. Since we only got to worry about just the alternator, we've got power steering or anything like that. Obviously no air conditioning. But if I bolted this sucker on in that hole, it would line right up. But that does present the issue of where do I mount this other side? I could probably make something, but it might be easier to mount it on this side, like up here. Ooh. I think most of my problems here are resulting from me changing the um, water pump housing. The motorhome uses a different water pump housing. I thought I had everything from that Fury, but I guess not. The motorhome didn't use anything to mount that alternator except for this. It used this on the bottom, like down here. Well, it's officially cold outside. Winter is coming in. I got a new transmission mount. So we'll throw in our new cross member, new tranny mount. I'm going to try to do it with the car on the ground, which will be unnecessarily difficult, but I don't want to jack it up, so that's what we're doing. Fun fact, 69 up to 69 uses these big bolts for the cross member. 70 uses a 3 8 bolt for the cross member. 71 on up, different. Just first things first, let's toss this cross member up to make sure she's done. She's what we need. Oh yeah. Okay, I think I put the mount on backwards. This thing needs warbled out. You can see where the stud's hitting it right there. And that's because the transmission mount is a $5 piece of crap. Just gonna use a burr bit on my drill here. Burr bits make nice, round, smoothed out, rolled out holes. So uh, let's try that out. I did it way too big, so now we'll need like 14 washers, but yeah, that's okay. Mother Mopar approved. After much pain and gnashing of the teeth, I got all the bolts in, uh, except for this one. I'm sure the car being completely tacoed has nothing to do with why it didn't want to fit. That bolt over there, see it? See it? I don't know, you might miss it. You see? That one? Well, you don't need that one. Just these three, you know? Three out of four ain't bad, just like Meatloaf said. Well, we have a shifter. I don't know if that's the right direction or not, but either way, either this will be parked, or this will be parked. I don't know, or care. So uh, that was just some random piece of metal I found, which seems to do the trick. Anyway, guys, I'm drowning out here. It's raining and freezing. I think I'm gonna head in for the night. Might wrap up a couple things tomorrow, but we're about out of time for this week. Now we're back out here for one more night, and whatever I get done tonight is all we're getting done for this week, so I have time to, you know, make the video. I've been working a little bit uh, before I turned on the old camera here. So I went ahead and replaced that exhaust manifold over here. Uh, I got a new one on eBay, only 80 bucks shipped, which I thought was pretty fair. Uh, now this one looks much worse than this one, but thankfully God will take care of that one for us and rust it right up uh, due to oxidization and all that. Put this EGR thing back on. I'm too lazy to make a block off plate and no, that, that's fine. You, know, you can't not have that. So uh, what I'd like to do real quick, well for one, I went ahead and picked up, got a radiator, got a drive shaft, got all the stuff for a drive shaft. 
So we'll probably put the drive shaft together, try to put it in the car. We'll put the radiator in. Uh, now I'll plug off all these vacuum hoses, put a fuel filter on it, and that might be all we can get done tonight. As you can see, I got my little carbon monoxide creating Mr. Heater here. Uh, and, you know, we got the tarps hanging up and stuff. So it's not too bad in here, but I got to run that like every 10, 15 minutes. So for starters, I'm fixing these vacuum leaks. Well, all these open vacuum ports. I just got a bunch of these little plug things you can get at the parts store. These are guaranteed to develop a pinhole in the end of them and whistle and deter deer from miles around whenever it's whistling or give you impossible to trace vacuum leaks. You know, your choice, actually. You can have either. But anyway, you put them on there and, you know, they're, they last for ah, a day, two. You know, then you gotta replace it. Then what we're gonna do next is throw this fuel filter uh, right before the fuel pump, but right thereabouts. And that's because we're gonna uh, try to run the factory tank at some point. And I'm just kind of expecting that not to end particularly well. So, you know, we'll try to at least salvage our fuel pump. Oh, there we go. It looks pretty nice and tidy in there. And, uh, you know, you might notice I put a MicroGuard oil filter on here. And uh, you know why? Check this out. Everybody loves Wix, right? Contents made in Russian Federation. Give me a freaking break. If you, as a giant company like that, are going to outsource all your crap. Don't expect people to buy it. I mean, how stupid would you have to be? You know, I could buy the off-brand thing that's made in the USA, or I could buy the name-brand thing that's made, you know, with slave labor. Hmm. Anyway, you know, it's a hot takeover. Well, here's the radiator I bought. It is a, a Luxorad. I don't know. Anyway, uh, it's a. Literally the cheapest radiator I could find on eBay. It was $117 for this. Actually, pretty nice. So far. Wow. How shiny this thing is. Well, to mount one of these radiators, evidently, it just uses these four little welded nuts. Itty bitty quarter inch bolts to mount the freaking radiator in. And people made fun of me for zip tying the goat's radiator in. Like, uh, that's actually better, probably. But anyway, clearly this is all bent and screwed up. I'm going to need to gently persuade, like, this area and maybe uh, some of that area there. And, you know, just to straighten it out a little. Uh, ooh, too far. Uh, yeah, you know what? We'll use some longer bolts, it'll be fine. There's clearly no other damage, so we'll just ignore everything else. Looks like you start the bottom two bolts in, and then the radiator just kind of slides over the top. I might even use the trans cooler in this thing, although it's got these kind of weird, like, AN style fittings, which I don't really dig very much. I'd much rather just have a regular fitting. So maybe not, maybe we just put an extra cooler on it for simplicity's sake. But yeah, maybe we just drop her on in. Oh, that's not too bad. But uh, yeah, one of the bolts line up. Excellent. That one almost does. We can make do with self-tappers for the rest. And I'm, I'm doing that for my Mopar guys, cause you know, I'm, I'm not a hack, okay? You know, I, I'm, I'm a, I'm kind of a professional, so, you know, it's, it's okay to be jealous, I get it, like, you know, I mean, I get it, down in the comments, you're jealous, you know, that I'm so good at this. Oh, there we go. Well, cross-thread it, nature's Loctite. Yeah, boy, this, <laughs> yeah, it's like, a, it's in here, like, crooked and sideways. <laughs> It's about as, about as messed up as a soup sandwich, let me tell you. I'm just going to fix this the only way I really know how, and that's, I'm just going to go ahead and shoot a self-tapper. That'll be the only one that actually holds it. Well, this pitiful excuse for a radiator installation is complete. Pretty proud of myself. <laughs> I got the finest radiator hoses I could find. Uh, you know, they... 
almost fit. Not quite, but almost. On well, something like the other, it almost works. It just needs about two or three inches. Cut off the that, so. Where do the scissors go? I am lose, I'm losing my mind, guys. They're right there. God damn it. So, anyway, so I'm gonna cut a little bit. Oh, hi, kitty. Ugh, come on, my scissors. My scissors are, are dying here. Come on. Oh, ha. Huh. Freaking money, I nailed it. God, you know, sometimes I almost think I'm competent. Then I remember the what I've actually done. Clocking of your clamps. Very important, very important. Don't clock your clamps where, man, that is a dangerous alliteration. So don't clock your clamps before where you won't be able to get to them again, you know? So, but keep in mind what you're gonna have on the car when you're done. So you don't end up blocking one of them and, you know, you eventually make it a real headache for yourself. And we got all these hose clamps we salvaged out of the motorhome, so, you know, that thing really continues to pay for itself. In fact, JD and a buddy of his are out hanging out in there right now. I wired up the generator in it and wired some lights into it and uh, got her, got the generator running. And so if they've got lights and stuff in there. It's pretty cool. The old saying is, you know, measure twice, cut once. Well, I just measure none and cut like four times until I get where I need to be. And, uh, you know, it works for me. Let's see what our fitment's like now. Oh, yeah. Pretty good. I give her a little twist, but it will do. It will do. So, let's go ahead and tighten this up. I don't have any coolant to put in it, but that's just as well because I need to get two heater hose plugs. Anyhow, because, well, uh, we're not going to have a heater, so. Kind of starting to look like an engine bay in here. I don't know. Starting to get a little nervous, you know. These things are starting to get serious. Look at why, why do they have to do this? Come on, man. Well, here's what I got for a drive shaft. Now, I use Southwest Speed for all of my drive shafts, and there's no sponsorship here at all. I'm just telling you guys that this is the cheapest place you're going to get a drive shaft. Uh, this baby was $280 shipped to my door. Uh, and there's no... <laughs> they don't even know who I am. So, there's nothing special going on there. This is a brand new drive shaft. You joints installed. And they'll give you... They'll install the yoke for you, too, if you tell them what you want. But Anyway, we're going to remove this 1310 U-joint out of here because I needed the Torque Flight yoke. This is a 7290 uh, yoke, or yoke here. I kind of screwed up. I uh, ordered two conversion 1310 to 7290 U-joints. And uh, turns out this thing actually takes a 7260 U-joint. I just kind of assumed to be the bigger U-joint being a Roadrunner. Uh, but I was wrong. So I should have bought a 7260 yoke and it would have been way cheaper. Actually, I had one which I, I didn't know until I bought that. This whole thing's been a cluster, okay? So please, keep your roasting to a minimum. It's been a rough week. <laughs> as far as I have spent so much money on this car in the last week, the budget is, it's gone. It's gone, it's out the window. It's, it's just, hi kitty. Uh, it's out the window. So that means we're waiting until next Wednesday to be able to actually install the drive shaft, but I should be able to toss this on and at least tell if it's the right length. And I just looked up the length for a 69 Roadrunner and said, yeah, that's the one I want. But that's not how you ever want to do that. So I'm sure sure I'll have no problem. No problem here at all. Ugh, let's go ahead and void the warranty on this right now. It went. Now we take our socket, put it back over this side, and try to drive the other one out the other side. Or at least enough to where we can finagle the U-joint out, like so. And then we'll just knock this guy. Key here is to kind of keep your pounding even. Otherwise, you'll end up trashing the. You want to crash in the drive shaft yoke. Ask me how I know. That helps a lot if you put that grease zerd in first. 
God, it's so cold. I can't run the heater. You guys won't be able to hear me. I probably want to put it on the yoke first. That would make my life a little easier. By the way, these are Niapco U-joints, which are still proudly made in the USA, which is just kick-ass of them. I just gotta, you know, put it in the vise here. That's what they used to call me in high school. The vise. No, they didn't. There we go. That's in there real nice. It rotates nice and free. No funny feelings or noises or crunchy, crunchy, nothing like that. You don't want that. That's bad. Drive them in just a little bit extra so you can get your inner snap ring set. You're going to want to put one of your inner snap rings on. Like so. Your other side and just give it a little tap. And... Hopefully be able to wiggle it in there. So now we'll just set this guy in here and drive this one in a little bit further maybe. Uh oh. What? That didn't stick before. There. And now with these, take an outside clip and you just squeeze them. Make sure they're popped in all the way. And boom! One semi-functional drive shaft. Will be as soon as I get the right U-joint for the back. It's no big deal, it's just a pain in the ass. Puts us behind again. Turn off the carbon monoxide dispenser for a second. Nope, a little hard to see, but it fits absolutely perfect. And his Mopar's got that little rubber thingy on the tail shaft there, and it's got about you know an inch and a half of play. Just about right. So, you know, honestly. Kind of funny, that 1310 U-joint fits in there pretty dang good. Uh, you know, a uh, enterprising individual might throw some U-bolts on there, throw a tack weld on the cap and call it good, and, you know, I might do that if this doesn't work out how I want it to. <laughs> but, uh, you know, for now, we will, I will try to do it the right way, and we'll go next week and finish this up and we will have a complete drive line in this car for the first time in multiple decades probably 30 years or so i hate to say it guys but i think that's going to do it for now obviously we got a lot more stuff to do well, we will make the next episode will this piece of crap run and move you know we got to get that u-joint straightened out we got to get an alternator on there uh trans cooler trans cooler lines uh, I got a trans filter. I'd like to drop the pan on that bad boy so you get to look forward to who knows what lives inside of that thing. You know, beyond that, there's not too much else. Fill it with coolant. Uh, boy, boy, it's close. It's really close, guys. So make sure you stay tuned. Hit that subscribe. Hit the like. And comment down below what you want to see done with this thing whenever I'm done with it. You know, where, where, where we drive it. But make sure you're, you know, you're commenting down below. That's probably the biggest thing you can do to help this channel out. Other than join the Low Buck Club, which you can join down below. You click join and sign up for it. 99 cents a month. And you become the sponsor of this channel. Kind of keeps the corporate stuff out. And I know a lot of guys don't really like it when other channels have, you know, brought in big corporate sponsorships and you know they got they got the the white picnic table with all the parts on it and well uh <laughs> you, you can see what i got i would like to keep doing it that way uh we're over a hundred members of the low buck club you can see every video early and i believe i will probably start doing like a members only chat once a week probably 20 30 minute thing uh just a little live chat whatever you can ask whatever you want a little more personal uh, and since i I kind of lack on doing the live stream stuff anyway. So literally 99 cents. It was as cheap as I could make it. Other channels charge like 15 bucks. So I wasn't going to do that. That just seems wrong. So. Big progress made. Roadrunner is coming along. And she's going to be rocking and rolling soon. Hopefully less rolling. But rocking for sure. Uh, we'll see you guys next time on Pole Bar Garage, the real budget YouTube channel.